Hi everyone! Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Stitcher. My name is Megan. You can find me on Instagram as Megan underscore Babauta underscore on Ravelry as Mama Maid VM, or you can email me at theseattlestitcher at gmail.com. As I say, you are all very, very welcome here. So, it's been two weeks. I've got some starts, I've got some whips. I have knitting, I'll save for the end, and then of course, just life chatter if um, Malachi gives me enough time. I'll get to that. <laughs> so as I do, I am just going to hop right in and start with the starts. If you've been following along with my little cross stitching journey here, first of all, thank you so much. But second, then you'll know that I, I've kind of had this goal of minimizing the starts just because when I found out I was pregnant and knowing that in the year 2024, I just, I was going to have a lot less stitching time with a newborn, even though I'm home because I am obviously on maternity leave. But regardless, uh, most of it is just spent being like extremely exhausted and taking care of a newborn. Plus I have a six-year-old so it's been a lot and that made me realize like I need to start less and hopefully with starting less I would actually get some more progress on my whips um I definitely feel like it's been successful when it comes to the progress on on larger whips because I feel like I've been pulling out some larger pieces more often but I don't know, I guess we'll kind of have a recap on it at the end of the year. I mean, we're already in April, which is crazy, but one of my goals was to pretty much allow myself a quarterly start and then I could have earned starts for the rest of the year. I've kind of like loosened up my restrictions for sure. Um, and you guys are always super supportive and like kind to me and tell me, you know, like you deserve to just stitch what you want and do what you want. And I'm always like, you're right, girl, you're right. <laughs> treat yourself <laughs> that's me every time I read the comments <laughs> so one of my planned starts though so this wasn't one that I had to earn it was just a planned quarterly start is Teresa Kogut's remember me this is one of the samplers that she has it's a beautiful piece I just love it get a little bit closer it's just so pretty. So I'm stitching this two over two with the called for DMCs. I'm using one of the fancy flosses, the classic color works one. I opted out of using the week style works just cause I didn't want to place an order just for one week style works <laughs> floss. Um, but so here are the flosses. Like I said, I'm using all the DMCs and then that one classic color works. It's gorgeous, isn't it? This palette, beautiful. And I'm stitching this on a 32 count Jackson Fabric Arts. So again, that's Jackson Fabric Arts. This is London Fog. I just wanna show the fabric because it's so beautiful. It's like a Renaissance painting of a, like a sky, a heavenly sky. Like I feel like instead of London Fog, this needs to be renamed to Heavenly Sky. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to explain it because in person, this area that you're seeing on the camera that's looking more beige, it's actually a blush pink. So it really does look like just a beautiful skyline. It's absolutely gorgeous. And because this pattern, if you look, it's actually a lot of fill in. So down here, that basket is all filled in. The leaves are all fully filled in. A lot of the flowers are full coverage as well. So like even these larger flowers, this fence line, the whole house, the trees, the big flowers in the middle. And because of that, although this fabric is busy, I think it'll look amazing. And here is my start. Can you believe it? I did the whole entire left side. I mean, not really, but kind of, I'll explain. So I did the corner here. I'm an upper left-hand corner stitcher as a starter. Let's put it that way. And I decided, well, I want to just get down the length of this. Don't know what, I don't know what crawled up me to make me want to do that. Okay. <laughs> but I just caught a bug and I couldn't put it down. So I started in this corner and then to be able to track how long it needed to be, I would just go in and put like a few lengths of thread of one color and then change the vine and then I'd go down the brown and then again, get in a few lengths in here. And that's made it to where I could count off of each one of these motifs to be able to get down to this leaf, which provided me my corner on the bottom. So I got to the full length of the piece on the left side and I did do the fill in on this tulip here, which I love. Cause I just, I love the history of tulips, you know, tulip mania and it's just very fascinating. It's very interesting. So I got that one completely done. That's um, a finished one. And then I moved up here to start stitching her fully finished or fully filling in, gosh, <laughs> this daisy here. So I just have the middle of it. But yeah, I just kind of am gonna jump around now to fill in different flowers. I went down here and got the other quadrant of this funky little flower. 
I got this leaf fully filled in. So yeah, I've just been having a really good time with this piece. I absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful. And I think, like I said, when the flowers really are fully filled in and you have a lot of that full coverage stitching, this beautiful backdrop of just, it looks like a an amazing, beautiful skyline. And I think it's gonna look great behind the house. I almost wish I would have put the piece this way because I like how it looks more like clouds, but I think I wouldn't have had enough on the, like if I put it this direction, I don't think I would have had enough length. So it's really pretty. It's a big piece, but I am super happy with my start on that because if you know me and you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that my starts are usually pretty minuscule and I'm trying to be better about that. I know that some of the girls are trying to be better about that as well. Like when we do start something to at least get it to 10%. Um, I'm not sure with this one because I do have the paper pattern. I'm not sure where I got to in it. I'm not sure what my percentage is, but I do feel really happy with this start. And I've been really loving, not just this fabric in general, but the two over two stitching. I really, I really like it. It's just something about the plump stitches. I, I don't know. It's really just doing it for me right now. But I will say, and a lot of you guys agreed my last video as I was reading the comments that my eyesight has gotten worse with my pregnancy, but this is actually a normal thing that happens in pregnancy. A lot of people can be affected this way in the sense that your eyesight can really just go poor. And I already have poorly eyesight, so it definitely didn't help. And it's been harder for me to see 40 counts. So I've been veering away from 40 count projects. You'll see as you uh, watch the rest of this video. But <laughs> this is one that I really enjoyed because it was so easy for me to see. And I was able to stitch in hand for a lot of it. Um, stitching in hand isn't my favorite only because I don't feel like my stitches lay as flat because I think the tension is just not the same. Uh, but all that to say, I loved it. I love a good Morgan hoop as well. Morgan hoops are these, they come in a few different sizes. This is the, I wanna say the seven inch hoop and it's just amazing. Um, they work really, really well. I buy mine on, mine on Amazon and I highly recommend them. So if you're in the market looking for a very lightweight, so it's easy to hold lightweight hoop, I would recommend that for sure. Um, my next start, this was my start that was like on a whim, which I'm trying to be better about doing. I'm trying not to start things like so much just, I don't know, at random. Like I see the project and then I'm like, I have to stitch that right now. I'm trying not to do that this year. And I will say this is the first time it's happened this year. So that's pretty good. We're four months in. And I mean, I made it through market. She's doing great. She's doing great. So if you happen to know who Hello from Liz Matthews is, don't lie, girl. You know who that is. <laughs> she has an amazing Patreon, and this is one of the patterns for her Patreon this month. This is Secret Garden. Like I said, it's on Patreon, so you'll have to go to her. You can go to her Instagram or just go on Patreon and look up Hello from Liz Matthews, but 10 bucks gets you into the like pattern stasher level, and that made it to where I had access to this pattern. So I joined that Patreon lickety split, let me tell you. I woke up Malachi, he was napping, went to two different craft stores with him, <laughs> literally got him into the little baby carrier every single time, in and out, in and out. Oh, it was kind of a nightmare, but I had to start this project. So <laughs> I had to go to a couple different stores because I had uh, problems finding some of the DMCs. There's two different color options. I'm going with the muted version. So here are the muted colors. I think this is so pretty. It's very spring and fresh and just beautiful. I don't feel like there's very many patterns that have this like, I don't know, they have this soft, beautiful rainbow without being like childish. You know what I mean? Like this pattern is elegant and beautiful and it doesn't come across as like something that I would like pop in my kid's room or something like that. And I will say, I mean, cutesy things like that, they're fun to stitch, <laughs> but everyone has a style, you know what I mean? And I would say my personal style of stitching is not really too much of cutesy, but this, this is like very elevated rainbow, you know? This is beautiful. I'm just, ugh. Liz Matthews, she's, she knows what she's doing, okay? She really does. So, if you remember last video, I had purchased off, off a 123 stitch a big cut of brown sugar Ada. It's a 20 count Ada. Never stitched on 20 count Ada before in my life. I love it. I'm obsessed. I get why my girlfriends love it. I definitely, I'm so glad I got a huge cut of it because I want, I want to stitch a huge sampler on it now. I'm just, I'm hooked. And I cut a little tiny piece out just so I could start this project. So here's my progress. I got the bird started. I have all three shades of the blue in there. 
And then I did some of the vine work over here. So just a couple outlines of some leaves. So you can see that's the bottom of a leaf. That's the bottom of a leaf. That's a tiny leaf. And then I'm working my way up right here to the stem of another leaf. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's just so pretty. Like I said, just very soft and subtle, but I love how the flosses are still like just this lovely rainbow. It's amazing. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this project. Like I said, check out her Patreon, um, 10 bucks. You get all these beautiful patterns and I'm loving this. I think it's stunning. And I love the way my stitches look on the 20 count Eda. It's just like if you were stitching on a 40 count linen, so they're really petite and tiny. You can see my hoop mark. That is from the Morgan hoop. So I had it literally drum tight in there. It was so tight in that Morgan hoop and it gave me perfect tension. And the fabric on this is just, it's beautiful. The brown sugar Ada, I love. The brown sugar linen, I wasn't as big of a fan of. It was very green, but I love this kind of green hued brown. It, I love that. That's a nice neutral for me. So definitely love was excited to kit that up happy to start it and that was kind of my like sporadic start um i do have a restart i think i had restarted this already the last time that i i think i did maybe i didn't <laughs> so shout out to jess she sent me her version um or her version, her kit of The Lady and the Unicorn by Thea Gouvenier. And this is just a beautiful pattern that I had already started. Unfortunately, my tale of woe was that I started it in the upper left-hand corner instead of being a good girl and starting it in the middle like I was supposed to. <laughs> but that made it to where I knew that I was going to be cutting it too close with the margins. The reason I knew that is because, shout out to whoever this person was, I cannot remember their email now. But it was like a year ago when I first started the project and I mentioned that there was very little margin because Denise at Threadneedle Street, which is my LNS, she had mentioned how, cause she, she stitched this, it's hanging in the shop. She mentioned that there was very little margin and I was like, oh, I'll just give myself two to three inches then. So I gave myself like three inch margin thinking, you know, that's a normal margin because it is, but Miss Thea does not agree. She has even less than that. So I ended up finding out as well after someone emailed me a picture of their finished piece, that margin is tight. It is tight, honey. Okay. So she wasn't going to work. I was going to have to cut off like a couple inches across the bottom. A lot of you guys were super supportive. Like, you know, just cut off the bottom. It'll be fine. Um, uh, but I think something about that was just making me not want to pull the project out. Like I literally did not want to work on it anymore. <laughs> so that really sucked. But again, shout out to Jess. She sent me her kit, literally just sent it to me. Did not charge me a dime. This is like a hundred dollar kit. Mind you, when I bought it for my LNS, it was like $130. She just sent it to me. What a sweet baby angel. So anyways, she is my precious, precious princess now. And I told her we're best friends. So um, <laughs> I did restart and I started in the middle because I'm being the bestest girl. And look at that. That's the snout of the unicorn. Can you tell? I feel like you can. I mean, maybe if I didn't tell you, you couldn't tell, but <laughs> I love it. I'm just so excited to see the progress. It's really making me happy. I've worked on this today. I worked on it last night. I am obsessed. And so this is the stem and then that's the mouth. There's his like nostril here. And then this is the start of his little goatee. So I am like right here because the middle is within this little, uh, I don't know what you'd call this. Just some foliage. <laughs> I guess flowers. I don't know, but that's the middle. And so I just counted off of that to count over to him and started him. It's a lot of confetti. So I will say it's very confetti heavy. It's a large, large paper chart. Um, each page is large is what I mean by that. So it's not like your standard printer paper. Let me pull out a sheet and just show you. So this, I had my, my pattern, this was mine from my original. I had it bound into a book, but it's like larger than your standard printer paper. And yeah, it's a real pain. It's a real pain to count off of and to, or not count off of, but to work off of because some of the motifs are kind of similar. And especially in the unicorn where I'm at right now, there's like a square that is half filled diagonally. And then there's a square that's half filled just like horizontally and 
like I said, my eyes are just, they're bugging out on me right now. And so sometimes when I look at it, I have to really focus. And I found that I've been highlighting as well. I've been really bad about this in the past, like highlighting as I go. I'm really bad about that. But this time I literally will do 20 stitches, stop, and I highlight every single one of them. <laughs> every single one. I am tracking, girl, because I'm not messing this up again. And I just have like mega motivation to work on this. There's another Theo Gouvenier kit that I really want. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen it because <laughs> my birthday is next week and my birthday's on the 28th. And so I like jokingly posted to my story. I mean, not so much a joke. I was dead serious, but I posted to my story saying like, oh no, hope my husband doesn't see exactly what I want for my birthday right here. And then I linked a link for him to go buy it, <laughs> which that would be Theo Gouvenier's. I don't know what she calls this one. I'll pop a picture on the screen though. It's this beautiful floral piece. I want this so bad. I want this so bad. I want the black Ada version. I want it so bad, but we'll see. Um, if he knows what's good for him, he bought it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or am I? <laughs> so anyways, that was all my starts, I promise. And um, yeah, I'm just really motivated to work on those. I'm really loving Thea Gouvenier right now. I'm just obsessed. I found this new floss tuber and I think that she might be the reason that I'm obsessed with this kit right now because a lot of her pieces, I mean, they aren't Thea Gouvenier pieces or anything, but they like give me the vibes of Thea Gouvenier's probably because it's kits. She stitches a lot of kits. I'm gonna put her name on the screen. It's like red something stitches or red stitchery or something like that. I'm really enjoying her channel. Like I just, she's very like honest. And I, she even, I was watching her latest floss tube and she was talking about like her experience of purchasing something off of um, AliExpress or like one of those fast fashion sort of places and how she ended up realizing like it was, you know, like, oh, maybe this kit is from somewhere else. And anyways, I just, I like her openness and I like her, like her personality and she has a beautiful voice. Wonderful lady, go check her out. But anywho, um, I'll link her channel below. You guys know I have been linking so as much stuff below if you've been following along because I just had a baby almost two months ago now. Isn't that crazy? Two months? So anyways, because uh, I had the baby, I saved myself some, some time by not doing a detailed description box. So if you do have questions or you want to link to anything, let me know. Just leave a comment and I will, of course, link it to you directly. So moving on to whips though. This is a project I started last summer. I remember starting it because I remember being at the pool with my daughter and I accidentally didn't put something on top of the, the pattern piece that I was working from and it floated away and got pretty wet, but I did save it because I wasn't gonna repurchase it. <laughs> so this is uh, Brenda Gervais' Every Opening Flower. I'm stitching this on 40 count ledger, which is a Bestitch Me fabric. And I am using the very, very beautiful Vicki Clayton silk pack. So go check her out. It's, if you like silks, this is like one of the most affordable options I can, I can see on the market when it comes to buying silks. I mean, opposed to most sale, these are very affordable, easy to get your hands on, and they are so smooth and beautiful to work with. The luster to them is stunning. They're just their joy and they kind of have like a some of the colors have like a subtle variegation or modeling to them and I just love that like this one would be perfect for some grass oh, it'd be so perfect I'm like hoping that there's a little bit extra of some of these so I can use them in, in pieces in the future but like I said a 40 count ledger one over two ledger was a fabric of the month from bestitch me when I was in the fabric of the month club I'm debating joining that again but doing the half yards I didn't know she offered a half yard and then cam from cam the stitcher she was like uh Megan <laughs> she offers half yards and so I'm debating getting back on it because my issue was that I I need a half yard because I like big projects I like those 300 by 200 pro I like them Okay, I do. I like the big girls. They're my favorite. Um, if you know, you know. And <laughs> anywho, that made me think, you know what? I want to hop back on and I want to get those half yards. But anywho, here's my progress. So what I did was I decided to pull this out because Marjorie, she had pulled her Pick a Whip. And Pick a Whip is to stitch a project without any 310. Um, extremely hard for me apparently because like all my projects have 310 in them so that was a really good prompt and this is one that I had that didn't have 310 so I went in here and did the start of another one of these like weird triangles so got in there and then I completed the the full circle of this motif as well as the bow 
How like gentle and soft and beautiful is that though? Oh. And the very, that's one floss. That green is one floss. So that variegation, chef's kiss. Victoria of the Vicky Clayton Silks is amazing. Amazing. I mean, you can't tell me that that's not the best leaf color you've ever seen in your life because if you told me otherwise, you're lying. You're lying. I won't believe you. <laughs> I just, I will say the 40 count is really hard on my eyes. So I just, I had to put it away. I only had half of this done. So I did complete the full other half and like I completed this bow and I got that in. But after that, I was done. My eyes were just killing me and I couldn't do it. And that really sucks. But that's the reality of the situation right now. For a lot of people, their eyes get better. So I'm kind of hopeful that that'll be my case. Um, my eyes will just get better and you know, we'll go from there and see how it, see how it goes. Hopefully it goes okay. <laughs> my next project is my thread a day project. Okay, sorry the angle probably changed a little bit. My husband just called me. <laughs> he needed new work pants and so he's out with Amira buying work pants and he had to ask me what size his pants were. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah, my next whip is is the Modern Folk Embroidery 2022 Stitch Along. I'll pop a picture on the screen of the pattern itself. It's beautiful. It's like this very large sampler. I'm stitching this one over two on 36 count cream and sugar, I believe. Yeah, cream and sugar by Fiber on a Whim. This project is my thread a day project. So Canva Stitcher and Marjorie made, they're both doing like a thread a day. And when I was chatting with the girls, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make this my thread a day project. And so over the past two weeks, what I've been able to get done, let me get this folded up. Gosh, if I can even, is all of this. So what I did was I was able to get in the completion of my last name, so Babauta, it's all in there now. I got a little bit more of the border done here. And then I can't remember, I can't remember if last time I had completed the other side of this or not, but anyway, that's what I got done. So, tale of woe, guys. <laughs> I started this when I was pregnant and you know, pregnancy brain is real. It is. And I realized that the rise of each one of the these like little divots in the border uh, is one stitch too short. So that means that it's two stitches too short every single one. And so it's significantly shorter. So I <laughs> was like, do I frog all of that border stitching or do I just keep going? Because essentially the only difference it's going to make is that I'm going to have to have more of these repeats to complete out my corner. But as long as my last name fits and I'm able to bend this around and all the motifs that are over here fit, you know, how they should, then I'm just going to complete the, the border as I stitched it because it, it works. I mean, I rounded the corner here just fine. So yeah, essentially they, these are just closer together than they should be. <laughs> these should be a little bit more spread out, but they're not on my piece. And that's okay. But yeah, this is a big one. Um, <laughs> I showed it to my husband the other day. He was like, wow, that's big. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. But it's just so pretty. I absolutely love it. Also, let me know what you guys think. But I think that this is a ship. You see this here? I think this is like a Norse style ship. Like the long boats. You can see that that would be like the front. The You know how a lot of time it's like a dragon or something. And then these are oars. What do you guys think? I don't know, that's my best guess. Cause honestly, besides that, I cannot fathom what that's supposed to be. Let me know what you think. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just gonna, instead of continuing on the border, I'm gonna do the mirrored piece, which is these guys carrying the grapes. I'm gonna do them over here. I think that there's like a peacock instead of some of these motifs. So I'm gonna complete those out underneath my last name. Cause essentially as well, I also need to just see if my last name fits in here or if I'm going to have to fudge the border anyways to make it fit. <laughs> I guess I should say fudge the border even more <laughs> to make it fit. But I am really loving this. And I mean, I think you guys can see in general that this will really match my decor. Even though you don't see much of my house, if you follow me on Instagram, then you see a lot more of my space in general. But uh, it just, it'll really match my decor. It'll match my living room really well because I, I literally have pillows on my couch that are these color, this color. And this color, by the way, is Cloves by uh, Color and Cotton. And I did actually, after finishing out one card, I realized, because I did the math, 
I realized that I would need a couple more because I just did the math of like what percentage of stitches I was able to get because I have the PDF of this so I was able to figure out well I got 15.5 percent with one card of floss so 15.5 divided into the 100 percent that I would need obviously to finish it and that's why I realized I needed one more at least but I under I ended up ordering two just so I wouldn't have to be sparing with the floss and the dye lots are probably completely different but I don't see a difference at all like I can't spot the two that I ordered separately so love that again cloves um it's a beautiful color I will say it's variegated in the skein but all stitched up I don't see too much variegation so I probably could have just used a DMC and gotten a similar effect but I really love this color and color and cottons are really really enjoyable to work with so I can't recommend them enough I mean is it a necessity no is it what I wanted yeah <laughs> So I'm loving this piece. Like I said, it's my thread a day project. So I just, uh, I have a craft cart that I use as like my stitchy station. Essentially I roll it around either. I stitch over here or I'm stitching on a couch and I have these hooks. I got these off of Amazon and I'm able to just hook this onto the cart and then it holds my floss ring. So that's how I store my little thread a day. And then whatever project I'm working on at the moment, that's how I have my flosses kind of set up for that. The next whip that I pulled out, this one I barely pulled out. Um, so uh, Cam and Bridget, the museum stitcher, so Cam the stitcher and Bridget, the museum stitcher, they're both doing the Hello from Melissa Matthews 12 Days of Christmas. And I wanted to join them in the sense of keeping up with it throughout the year. I couldn't, I like was just so pregnant and falling so behind on everything. I just couldn't do it, but I tried, okay, I tried. So I'm stitching mine on a 40 count. Um, I guess I should preface that by saying, because in case you guys don't watch our channel, the both of them are stitching one of the months um, every month. And then there's a couple of extra months that they have to get some, like for the larger ones. That, so they'll spend two months on some of the larger ones. So essentially they'll have the entire series completed by 2025 and she'll have completed the whole entire series by the date that they finish. So it all works out. I, being one of their friends, wanted to join along and stitch these, get one done once a month. I couldn't keep up. I was just so pregnant. <laughs> and then the baby got here and I got even further behind. I mean, I was already way behind, but um, I kind of dropped off right away, which is fine. I'm stitching mine on a 40 count. I want to say that this is just, it is a Zweigart fabric, but I can't remember the exact colorway. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's like something gray or maybe silver or something. I don't know. It's a really nice, I love the fabric though. I got it at my LNS. But anyways, I pulled this out um, only to end up getting like a leaf in. That's literally it. Yeah. I think I got this leaf in and I literally put it away. <laughs> but I really do show you guys all of my stitching. So even if it's something that small, like I got this, this branch in and this leaf, that was it. <laughs> and the reason is because you can see this stitching is very tiny. This 40 count is lovely, but it's obviously 40 count and my eyes could not do it. They just couldn't do it. But I do love this. It's stunning, it's gorgeous. I love everything about it. The colors are amazing. Again, hello from Liz Matthews. Just, she kills it every time, she really does. But yeah, the way my stitches look on this fabric, amazing. I don't know what it is. Like this is just a good fabric. Silver Moon, I think that's what this is. Silver Moon, I wanna say, but it's a really nice soft white. It's not like pure white, it's just a nice soft white. So I'm doing the whole piece, just like Bridget is, on one piece of fabric. Um, Cam, she is doing the individual trees, but she's making hers into like a bunting at the end. So I am super excited to see how hers comes out because I really, I kind of almost wish that I would have done the trees because I really like them now that I'm seeing Cam's. But also every time I see Bridget's, I love seeing the whole piece because she has three months done now. So if you haven't, go check out her last YouTube video. She has three months all stitched on one piece it looks so good it looks so good so that is actually all of my stitching I want to say yeah I just have knitting to share and then I have all my life stuff which is just like you know the baby stuff and Amira stuff and all that good stuff so I'll move on into knitting I've got my knitting basket here this is what I keep on the couch next to me um usually honestly I keep it in this chair now because I usually nurse here in the middle of the night and so I can knit and nurse that doesn't 
seem to be too much of a bother. So I have this pattern here. It's from Nash Knits. I don't remember the name of the pattern itself, but I'll pop a picture of the pattern on the screen. I'm using the colorway Peach, and this is Drops Sky. I'll grab one of the balls. So here it is. This is Drops Sky. It's really soft and just airy and it's like a chain at yarn. I'm really enjoying working with it. I'm very interested to see how it ends up blocking out, wet blocking out. So it is a lace panel sweater. And last time I showed it to you guys, I had already split for the sleeves and I was about like maybe a few inches past the, the arm divide. Well, I did finish out the entire lace panel in the center. So that's all done and I'm on the ribbing. So I have gotten down to the ribbing at the very end of the sweater. This is a sweater for my neighbor's daughter. Um, she just had a baby as well. Her baby's a little bit older than mine. I, of course, this is quite large because I'm knitting the uh, one and a half to two year old size because I do like to knit these sweaters larger if I can than what the baby's in right now just because as much as I want to be a fast knitter, I am, but it's just that I don't actually have the time, you know? I have a newborn myself and all that, but I, I let her pick what size she wanted. Luckily she picked a larger size that made it really nice for me because I have time to finish it. And yeah, it's super cute. Um, I'm excited to pick up the lace on, or not the lace, but pick up the stitches on the side of the lace to knit that little ruffle. I think it's gonna be so cute. After I finish the body, I am going to wet block it. Like I said, cause I'm curious to see how it blocks out that lace panel with this chain at yarn. Just interesting construction, but um, not in the sweater itself, but the yarn, I just, uh, I'm really enjoying it. I think it would be great uh, for even an adult's knit. I mean, I know that this is like a blush pink, but they had other, like they had gray and white and all these, all sorts of colors, but I actually really like this color myself. I think it's super pretty. I would definitely knit another sweater out of this and I would knit myself a sweater out of this. It's just really nice. It's very, very soft as well. Um, the next thing that I have been working on and I did do a little bit of work on is my cardigan. This is from the Nordic Knits book and I did change the colors quite a bit. I also omitted one color. So I'm, instead of using, I think it calls for like, one, two, three, four, five. I think it called for five and I went down to four. I'm pretty sure, yeah. So I'm using um, four colors instead of five. And here is my work. So not very much further, but I have done just a few more repeats. And I am still working in the dark navy blue and the cream section to complete out one more repeat. But I'm really happy with this. It's coming along great. This panel in the middle is my sticking stitches. That means that I will actually physically cut this knitting myself after I've wet blocked it. Luckily, I'm using a pretty rustic wool, so I'm not worried about machine, machine stitching it or anything. I might just to ensure the stability of the piece, but um, the wool itself just tends to really meld together once you've wet blocked it and so I'm not too concerned but I do really love this. I was worried at first about the colors. I wasn't sure. I mean I love the colors looking at them but I wasn't sure about it when it was knitting up but my, my friends were like no it looks good like it looks good and I'm using a BC Garns Bio Shetland for most of the colors. So I have the cream, I have the dark midnight blue, I have this bright kind of robin's egg blue, really love this color. And then this is the only one that I have. I'm using the coned yarn. I don't know why I keep forgetting the name of it <laughs> off the top of my head, but I love it for color work because it's very rustic. Um, I cannot remember for the life of me, but anyways, I'll put it on the screen like I did last week. It's just beautiful. Oh, whole super soft, that's what it is. And I love this color. So um, I love it, these two especially. I know I already mentioned that, but really love it. It's been fun to knit on and it's just one of those things that color work is uh, pretty easy for me. I've been knitting for 20 years now. I mean off and on within that timeline. I have never like consistently except for within the last six years I would say. So I guess that's pretty consistent. Six years worth of knitting like consistently. I'm always having something on the needles but I would say yeah just there's been big breaks in my knitting when I was younger, like when I was a teenager, when I was in high school and junior high, there was big breaks in my knitting, but I kind of always had just uh, some knitting needles and some, you know, crochet hooks around and that kind of thing. But yeah, that's all my knitting. I didn't get anything finished. No FFOs, no finished projects. Um, I didn't work on my larger color work sweater in the past two weeks, but I do have life stuff. 
I'm trying to look around and make sure that was everything. I think it is. <laughs> so, um, Easter past, I know I should have talked about this at the end of last video, but I totally forgot. So Easter past, hope everyone who celebrates does have a wonderful e Easter, but, um, we celebrate and we went to my parents house my mom always does an amazing little easter egg hunt for my daughter obviously malachi is too little so he he just hung out with papa which is my dad and um, my dad is just the best grandpa he loves his grandkids so much and he loves his grandson that is for sure and he just holds them all the time like anytime I go and visit my dad's like give me that baby <laughs> he's holding them the entire time the entire time he is so good with him and it just I it makes me want to cry because I love my dad um he's my best friend <laughs> uh hopefully he never watches this because I don't want him to get you know too big of a head but <laughs> he's just he's uh, we're a lot of life in a lot of ways and um he's so good with his grandson and he's really excited to have a grandson here in washington um because i do have a nephew but he lives in a different state so anyways it's all that to say the, the mushy parts we went over there for easter it was amazing we had a great time amira had so much fun i'll pop some pictures as well of her and her little easter dress i got this dress at nordstrom this year and it was so cute um i always uh do Easter dresses. Easter and Christmas. Those are my two big ones that, and I have saved her dresses every single year. I think I will, I only got rid of like one year, I think the first or second year. And now I'm so bummed that I did because I want to keep them all. That's like the one clothing item I wanted to keep. I'm, I'm usually not someone who's like hoards stuff away from my kids, but, um, that is the one thing that I am hoarding away is that I, I've saved all of her nice dresses. So I'm excited for when she's older, you know, maybe someday or maybe even Malachi someday will you know want them who knows <laughs> who knows maybe he'll have daughters or something who knows but anyway all that to say it was great we had a blast it was super fun and then um we all got sick <laughs> because it was spring break so we all got sick and I was really glad because Malachi didn't get sick but then he ended up getting sick so that got really really sucked because I was planning to go and visit my uh grandma on my dad's side but I couldn't make it down there with him being sick, Amira being sick, still kind of lingering for myself and all that. So that really sucked, but you know, that's how it is sometimes. Um, kids bring, bring stuff home from school and that's, that's how it is, but we're all good now. Malachi's better now as well. Thank the Lord, because I was really worried. I did not want him to be sick. He, apparently he can hear him talk about him. <laughs> I was just so concerned, but he seems fine now. Um, he seems like he's doing much better. He seems happier. He has been gaining weight. He hasn't had another doctor's appointment yet though. So I don't know exactly what he weighs, but I can just tell physically looking at him, his face and everything, it's getting fuller. And that makes me so happy. Um, he just, he seems like he's growing at a normal rate and everything is good. And I'm just feeling very, very blessed. Blessed to have, um, you know, a healthy, healthy baby boy. Amazing. Amazing. So that's been great. Amira though, we went to her wellness checkup, um, for her six year old wellness visit and she got her eye test and sure enough, she needs glasses just like me. So the same day I was able to find a place that would take her in to get her eyes checked by the optometrist. And I ordered her up glasses at the eye doctor that same day. And she picked out just a really cute pair. I'm, I love the pair she picked out. She loves them too, but I'll pop a picture of her wearing them. She looks so cute. And yeah, she's just having a heck of a time wearing her little glasses. Um, she's doing pretty good, minimal with the head pain and stuff. Cause I know a lot of people, like I remember myself getting like headaches the first days wearing glasses. Oh, let me go grab Malachi. <sighs> okay, JK, he was fine. <laughs> so Amira got her glasses. She loves them. She's doing great. Um, Malachi, I mean, touch wood. <laughs> He's doing great right now as well. My birthday, I will be 29 on the 28th of April. So in about a week from now, I guess less than a week now, but no, maybe a week. I don't know. I don't know what today is. I forgot. <laughs> but anywho, about a week from now, I'll be 29 and yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. My husband went and had lunch with a friend and went and worked out with a friend who he hasn't seen in a long time. And his friend, he came home and he was like, yeah, he, he told me how he remembered, like when I, I told him about you for the first time, like how I told him how I felt about you and how I just, I really liked you. And it's crazy how life 
flies like that. And I don't know. It was very, uh, very kind that his friend remembered that and Daniel to come home and say that was very touching to me because Daniel and I have been together since I was 20 years. Sorry if the angle changed a little bit. Um, <laughs> I had to pause the video, but anyway, yeah, it's just been, it's been almost nine years now because we've been together since I was 20. So it's just crazy how fast time goes by and it doesn't feel like it's been that long. You know, it doesn't feel like it's been 10 years almost or nine years almost. And it doesn't feel like, you know, now I'm a mom of two. It's time is crazy. <laughs> um, and I'm definitely feeling it lately. It's just how wild and crazy fast everything goes by. So I'm trying to enjoy every minute. Um, and I hope you guys are too, you know, and I hope that whatever season of life you're in, whether it be a blessed one or a difficult one, that you know, you know, that we're all in this community, this tiny little community together, and we're here for you. And, you know, if, if you, if you want to talk about it, talk about it. <laughs> but anyways, for those of you that stuck around to the end, um, let me know what you're most excited about for like the spring and summertime. I know spring break has already passed for a lot of us parents, but are you excited about summer? Do you like summer? Are you excited about any stitching stuff? What you guys got going on? Oh, you know what? That reminds me though. Manning May is happening and I'm super excited about that. I, we did post on Instagram about it, me and the girls. Um, so it's our second annual Manning May, which is where we work on a Carolyn Manning project in the month of May. However many you want, you can do a new start, a whip, a whatever it may be, a restart, doesn't matter. As long as it's a Carolyn Manning pattern, stitch on it in May with us and use the hashtag. Um, it's super fun. Let me know down below if you're going to participate and let me know what pattern you're going to pick because she has some amazing patterns and there's so many. So I'd love to check out, um, what you guys are stitching on. And so yeah, leave a comment below, like, and subscribe if you aren't already. But yeah, love you guys so much. Bye.